time What you doing today? I said enzyme Want to make DNA? I said enzyme Show me your binding way Let me mix you with some primers Enzyme This episode is going to deal with polymerase chain reaction also known as PCR and gel electrophoresis both of these techniques are used for analyzing DNA. Specifically, you're looking for SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphism. PCR is an amplification technique, and amplification means you're going to make lots of copies of DNA. As you can see down here below, you can take just a small amount of DNA and make millions of copies in a very, very short time. Uh, this technique was in, invented by Dr. Kerry Mullis in 1984 and he received a Nobel Prize for his work in 1994. And obviously he's still alive and still doing work in biotechnology. The components of PCR, in other words, these are the things that you need to make it go. All right. First of all, you need a thermostable DNA polymerase. Thermostable means it needs to be able to uh, survive and do its job at a very high temperature. And the most common of these is TAC polymerase. Now, TAC polymerase comes from a hot spring bacteria named Thermus aquaticus, and it can remain stable near boiling temperatures, specifically right around that 70 degrees Celsius mark. So think of that as somewhere near twice human body temperature. You're also going to need free nucleotides, and that's what the second one bullet is down here. These are the four deoxyribonucleotides. Basically, you need free adenine, free cyan, uh, cytosine, free guanine, and free uh, thymine because you're going to be able to make uh, new strands of DNA. You're also going to need some synthetic illegal nucleotides, also known as primers. Now, synthetic means that we have designed these ourselves. And so we're going to use these to mark the beginning and the end of our target DNA or our template DNA because we only want to amplify a small specific piece of DNA, particularly just a single gene. Now, all of these are going to be placed into a, a single pellet, and that's going to go into your little, your little tube. That's what those little white little beads were at the bottom. Now, also inside one of these pellets is going to be some magnesium. Now, magnesium is used as a cofactor, and what a cofactor is, it's something that helps an enzyme work better. And the important enzyme that we see here in PCR is going to be TAC polymerase. TAC polymerase will not work unless it has these magnesium ions. So you've got to have just the right combination of magnesium ions to make this whole situation work. All right. So you can see here in this picture up here at the top, this pretty much shows you what would be in a PCR bead. You're going to have your synthetic primer. Remember that marks where we start and it eventually marks where we end our amplification. There's your free nucleotides, your TAC polymerase, and then obviously your, your DNA sample that you're going to make a lot of copies of. Okay. The main steps of PCR, there's actually three of them. The first one is called denaturation. This is where you heat your DNA up to around 92 to 96. So in our experiment, we use 94. This will cause the DNA to unzip because you've broken the hydrogen bonds between the base pairs. The second step is going to be annealing. You're going to cool it down to around 50 degrees Celsius. The range typically is from 45 to 65. And this will allow the primers to bind to the DNA but it's not cool enough to have the DNA completely zip back up. And then you're going to go through the process called extension. Here you're going to heat it up to 72 degrees Celsius. That's right in the prime spot for TAC polymerase. And TAC polymerase is going to attach to the primers and it's going to extend the complementary DNA. In other words, it's going to be adding those free nucleotides and making a new complement of DNA. In other words, you're making the copy of the DNA that you want. All right? So the denaturation, the annealing, and the extension, that is one cycle. Now, after one cycle, you have doubled the amount of DNA that you've had. Now, typically after 20 to 40 cycles, that's the maximum amount of cycles you can do because you're going to run out of these components. In other words, you're going to run out of your free nucleotides and your primer. So after 40 cycles, you're pretty much done. All right. Now, what I want you to pay attention to on this graphic is I want you to look down here at the end of the first cycle. Okay, At the end of the first cycle, you've got two strands of DNA. In other words, you started with one strand, now you've got two. At the end of cycle number two, you've got four because you started with two, you doubled it, you get four. At the end of cycle three, you've doubled that again, you've got your eight. 
However, I want you to look down here at the ones bordered in white. These are the strands where you finally have only your target DNA. And from here on out, with every cycle, you have more and more of your specific target DNA to the point where probably 99% of your fragments are going to be your target DNA. So it's a great way for you to make sure that you're only getting your one little snippet of DNA that you're looking for. Okay, now there are certainly some limitations of this. Number one, like I told you before, you've got 40 cycles maximum because you simply just run out of materials to make it, but you also can have contamination. If you do not use sterile technique and you're a little bit sloppy, you're going to start to amplify the DNA that you didn't want. So using uh, following directions and using sterile technique will take this contamination down to a minimum. Now, gel electrophoresis, you've had many times during your PLTW career, but I want you to remind you of the fundamentals here. And I want you to pay attention to this picture down here on the left. Here you can see the pipette that is filling up the gel. All right, And you notice that this person's not poking a hole in the gel, and it's simply filling up the gel. Now, this bottom picture over here onto the, the bottom right shows you what the chamber looks like. And so at one end, we have the negative electrode, and then at the very opposite end, we have the positive electrode. DNA has a slight negative charge, so when we turn on the electricity, the, um, the DNA is going to be pulled towards the positive electrode over here on the right and that's going to drag the DNA fragments through the gel. Now the longer fragments have trouble dragging through the gel so they do not fall or travel very far and then the smaller fragments who can get through the gel pretty easy they're going to move farther down the gel. Stuff that you should already be well um, versed with through your PLTW classes. All right. This is an example of what was supposed to happen in our experiment. As you can see here, the very first lane where you can see stuff, this was the zero cycle. Okay, We didn't make any copies of our DNA, this was the control. Lane number two over here would be the 10 cycles. Notice it's a little bit darker, so you have more DNA. The third lane is then going to be the 20 seconds, so we have even more DNA. And finally, this last lane is the 30 cycled one and this one has the maximum amount of DNA because it's gone through the full PCR. Okay. That's all there is to this, uh, this review video. Make sure you go to my big campus and you uh, go through this PowerPoint maybe once or twice. Check your notes you have in your lab journal, but make sure you know all the steps to PCR and you know how gel electrophoresis works. So until the next time, I'm going to catch you on that flip side.